see that little indent on the top of the axe ball? Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. We got that uh, indent just at the top of the axe ball or lynx ball, whatever you want to call it. So after we have this, the last detail I'm going to be adding is those little ridges that go across like right here on the uh, axe bottle. So to make those ridges, uh, you're going to make a cube. So click here and click cube. Just move it out of the way so you can see it better. And you're going to make the size X4. That automatically goes to zero some, for some reason. The size Y160. I don't know why it automatically goes to zero, but just drag it to uh, around 160, and the size Z to four again, and it goes, and it goes zero. Uh, check off fillet, and you just wanna change to fillet radius from two to one. Once you have that cube, that's gonna be one of the ridges, and, and don't worry, you don't have to copy and paste it a million times and put it all over the ridges. There's an easy way of doing this. Click here and click array and then drag the cube into the array. And it's a really convenient way of doing this. I tried putting in a cloner object but it didn't work so well. But the array works very well. And you're gonna want to make the radius of the array 130, which matches the radius of the uh, cylinder. And you're gonna make the copies 36 copies. And that's looking pretty good. You got that uh get that nice array that perfectly goes around the axe bottle. Go to your top view, make sure it's centered, which it already is, and then go to your right view, and just drag it up, like, right there. And I think we're pretty much done with our uh, axe bottle model. So, once you have something that looks like that, we're going to be starting to do some materials. So, uh, the first material we're going to do... It's link. The link for it is in the description. It's the second one, and if I show it in finer, it looks something like that. It's kind of an upside down sticker of an axe bottle. So uh, once you've saved that from my description, download it, whatever. You're gonna drag it into the materials bar in Cinema 4D, so you get that plus sign. It's gonna ask you, Cinema 4D, this image is not in the document search path. Do you want to create a copy? You're gonna click no. Pretty much whenever it has that, you're going to click no. Uh, and you can pretty much, uh, for this material, you can pretty much keep the settings how they are. You might want to try adding a little bit more specular so it gets that kind of metallic look. But otherwise, you can just keep it the way it is. And you're going to drag it onto this uh, cylinder right there. Because that's where the axe is going to show up. And for the uh, tag properties, it's very important that you... Uh, follow what I'm doing. So you're gonna want the projection. You're gonna want to make that cylind cylindrical, and you're gonna make want to make the length x. I think that's 113, and the length y 198. And you're gonna check off seamless, which is gonna kind of reverse the uh, mapping of it, so it's kind of upside down. So it's not upside down, I guess. Just play around with the offset X and the offset offset Y. So maybe you get something that looks like that. And let's try rendering it. All right, uh, you can see it's upside down, and sometimes when you're doing ma uh, material mapping, you come across problems. So let me just try unchecking uh, seamless because that might be the problem. Let me just render that. No, that's not it. Um. Sorry about this, guys. Just recheck seamless. And there we go. Looks like that's running pretty well. You're just going to have to do a lot of uh, playing around with the offset X and the offset Y. Try to keep the length X and length Y to 113 and 198. 
So I'm going to stop to render. There we go. It's looking pretty good. And the next material that we're going to add is the noise material that I made. It's the last material that's going to be in the description. And it's to get that out. Uh, if you look at your axe ball or links ball, if you have it in hand, you kind of have that grainy texture on like the uh, twisty thing at the top. And this is the material that I made. It's kind of a noise material, uh, which I made in Photoshop or Pixelmator. So download that from my uh, from the description. And just drag it into the materials bar. It's gonna ask you that message again. And you're gonna click no. You're gonna change some settings on this. You're gonna double click on it. The material you made, and let's make the color, make the brightness 120, and the mix mode multiply, and then check off reflection. You're gonna want the texture to be Fresnel, the brightness to be 1%, and the mix mode, I mean the mix strength to be a uh, 3%, put the blurriness at 10%. And then for specular, uh, turn the width down to about 30, the height down to about, let's say, 2, and keep the fall off at 0. And then drag that onto the cylinder and also onto the array of cubes. And that actually is pretty much it for the axe ball. But once you have that, you're going to select everything and right click and group the objects just so you have it in one place and call that axe. And then maybe load in a floor and drag that axe bottle. So it's touching the floor right there. Right there. Zoom out a little bit. And I will show you guys how to kind of clone the axe bottles like I did in the preview pretty easy so click on MoGraph, cloner object and drag this axe mill object into that click on this cloner object you're gonna make the mode grid array and let's make the count uh, 4 by 1 by 4 and the size 1000 for the first one and 1000 for the last one and then if you drag that cloner object up by going into the uh what's it called? Going into this view and just lining it up. It might be kind of slow depending on how fast your computer is, so I'm just gonna put the count down to three by three so it'll run faster. And let's uh, move this down. As you can see the uh, it's kind of lagging. Sorry about that. And there we go, we got kind of an array of a, or a cl cloner object of different axe bottles. And how to get them to kind of move in different directions so not just standing there. You're going to click on, you're going to click on your cloner object so it's selected. Click on MoGraph and Random Effector. And for Move, you can, uh, it is where it starts getting kind of laggy. So you're going to want to save your project in case it force quits. No, let's say the next. So yeah, you can just play around with the move. That's just kind of how. But don't play around with the uh, position Y because that's the height, and then it will go like over the floor and under the floor, and won't look very good. Just play around with all that stuff so it kind of goes in a random position, and you can change the rotation by checking it off. Just messing with some of these values. Uh, but there we go, guys. That's pretty much a tutorial on how to model an axe bottle in Cinema 4D. Please uh, like the video because I worked on this tutorial. And please subscribe, guys.